Another year, another set of action cameras dropped. These things are basically iPhones at this point. And for 2025, GoPro decided to put what looks like a heatsink on the front of the camera. Otherwise, it feels pretty much the same. Then we've got the Ace Pro, which is the same, and it's still enjoying a nice Elmer's glue cocktail on the back of the short bus. And then DJI sent me out their Action 5 Pro and sponsored this video. And this thing claims to have, let's see here, I got the spec sheet. Okay, so it's got built-in storage, which that's actually really cool. Uh, it's got dual mic two connection. That's actually a really sweet feature when you think about it. And then, <laughs> okay, they claim a four hour battery life on this thing. That's impressive if it's true. Now we're not looking at comparing the Action 5 Pro to other action cameras today. We're just taking a look at whether or not you should upgrade your Action 4 to the 5. By the way, if you're interested in picking up one of these or you want some more information, link is down in the description below. The biggest question is, does this thing look any better than the last camera? So we're gonna start this out with a side-by-side -side comparison by burning some rubber on the giveaway Diavel. Link is down in the description if you wanna get entered. Now we've got both cameras going right here on my chest, as you can see, and I'm not using the settings I would normally go for. Normally I like to match the shutter speed to the frame rate. I'm not doing that now because I don't have enough ND filters to put on both of these cameras. So I'm using the uh, normal color settings that I use in my videos, but I'm using the automatic uh, shutter speed setting. It's, it's managing the exposure itself. Now, that all being said, I think having edited a ton, a metric crap ton of footage on the Osmo Action 4 throughout the last year, and then having edited a bunch of footage off this new one, back to back, I can definitely see a material difference between these two cameras. Now, a lot of that is down to the HLG that's on here, which is hybrid log gamma, which is functionally a different kind of HDR that is more compatible with more screens. This thing also has 13 and a half stops of dynamic range, which allows you to get more detail in the shadows and the light, and it helps you mellow out the contrast, which actually means the footage looks a lot better. But that's a whole bunch of technical gobbledygook. Let me take a second and show you exactly how that translates into editing and what the finished product looks like. So we're looking at the Action 5 right now, and you can basically see that I haven't done a ton to this footage to make it look good. Uh, just a little bit of slider action here, and then if we go to the curves, a little bit more slider action all to the right to bring them up. And they, they feel a little bit more true to life that way. If I rewind this clip a little bit, you're gonna see me stand up and look down at the tank. That tank color is exactly what the Ducati looks like. It's not this super neon red. It's a little bit more muted and a little bit more adult, I would say. But then when it comes back in, and I go down and the exposure on the cameras drops, you get the skies color on the top of the tank. And that's exactly what this Ducati looks like when we're rolling down the road at sunset. Let's go to the Action 4. And the one thing I'll notice about the Action 4 right out of the gate is that it requires a lot more work to get the shadows to match the 5. And this is, this is as close as I could get it. The 5 still tends to be a little bit more sophisticated in its separation, whereas this feels like I'm hitting it with a sledgehammer. Now, if you'll allow me to toot my own horn for a second, I think one of the things that sets the channel apart is my audio. Audio is a subtle thing and it's tough to get right, but when you do, it really elevates the videos that you're seeing because you want to be able to hear an exhaust like this. And that is entirely down to the fact that the Osmo Action 5 Pro here has the Osmo Action 4's massively scalable internal gain control. I can go all the way down to negative 20 decibels, which is actually super important because I use a high quality, very hot uh, stereo lav mic. And when I'm riding a bike that is this loud, it's super important that I can mix my voice and the bike's audio separately. 
Since I record in stereo, what that allows me to do is double the audio track, move one all the way to the left, which tends to be a little bit more high-end focused, which is great for vocals, and then I can take the other one, pan it all the way right, which tends to be a little bit bassier, just based on position in the helmet, yours might vary, and that gives me a lot more exhaust note. And then I can blend the two together, which gives you a much better audio experience because when I'm talking, I can focus on my vocals. And when I'm not, being able to switch between the exhaust and my voice is actually a really nice feature. And admittedly, it's something I could do with anything I can pump a stereo lav into, which basically, is only the Osmo Action cameras. But when it comes to sound, one of the things that really sets the Action 5 Pro apart from the Action 4 here is the fact that you can pair two DJI Mic 2s to this thing, whereas you could only pair one to this guy. And it's really awesome because you could put one Mic 2 in your helmet, another Mic 2 in your buddy's helmet, and then have all of the audio go straight to the camera and you won't have to sync it later. Or you could take the Mic 2 in your helmet take the other one, put it in the tail of your motorcycle and get some really nice exhaust clips. One thing that's really important about this is it makes sure that you can actually have two independent audio channels, which means you can talk into one mic and then grab the other and start talking into that one and edit those tracks independently. That's actually really important. This is a feature that allows for a lot of creativity and a lot of flexibility, and it's something that I've really only started to scratch the surface of. Now, you're probably sitting there thinking to yourself, well, okay, all that sounds neat, but I'm just recording my rides with my buddies, or, you know, I record track days, or I'm just using it as a dash cam. I just set it on auto and let the camera do the thinking for me. Do I really care about all those high-end features? True, you might not, but what you probably do care about is battery life. DJI claims a staggering 240 minute runtime, which is frankly an unbelievably long battery life. No, seriously, I don't believe them. <laughs> the new batteries are 1950 milliamp hours versus 1770 on the old ones, and they have a nominal energy rating of 7.55 watt hours versus 6.81. What? Just because I'm wearing these awesome flying eyes doesn't mean I'm any smarter. I got no idea what any of those numbers mean. All I can tell you is that the new batteries got bigger numbers than the old battery. So the obvious thing to do would be to stack these two cameras up against each other. I set them both up to record at 1080p 30 and waited a very, very long time for these things to die. This one is at 68. This one is at 58. So. The uh, super battery here is actually starting to last longer. They're literally lasting so long it's holding up production on my review. It's kind of annoying. It's kind of annoying right now how long they're lasting. Great on the road, not right now. So the results are in and the Action 5 Pro lasts about an hour longer than the Action 4. However, we are about an hour short of the claimed 240 minute runtime. Now, I do not know how they tested these cameras. It's entirely possible that they were running at different frame rates or different resolutions. I can't replicate that exact testing method, but what I can tell you is that a three hour battery life out of one action camera is staggering. That is so long that I actually wouldn't even need to bring extra batteries on a full day of filming. I could bring just this camera as it is, put it on my helmet and ride, get everything that I need and probably still not even need to charge it for the next day. A three hour battery life in the field is some serious business. This is the first action camera to my knowledge that actually has built in memory on board. And that's super duper handy. You got 47 gigabytes on here, which is a lifesaver. There have been a handful of times that I've forgotten to put cards in one or more of my cameras, but I never forget to put a card in my chin mount. 
what that allows me to do is if I forget a card, I can just harvest the one for my chin mount and pop it in whatever camera I'm missing and then switch over to the onboard storage. And if you're thinking that 47 gigabytes doesn't sound like a lot, you'd be wrong. I can film an entire day's worth of vlogs, basically from sun up to sundown on that 47 gigs, just like I can do it on one battery. I don't even have to put an SD card in this thing. For me, that's an amazing emergency backup, but for the average Joe, that's just really nice to have because it means they get to save $15 on a 64 gigabyte SD card. Now, like DJI does every year when I review one of their cameras, they send me a big brief that has all of the big upgrades that they wanna shout out. And there's a bunch of stuff highlighted that's Pretty neat, like this thing has an OLED touchscreen, whereas this thing's only an LCD. But are you really gonna be watching footage on the nice fancy OLED screen? The LCDs work fine. This thing's also good for another two meters underwater. I mean, this can go down to 20 and this can only go down to 18 meters. But at the end of the day, that's not a huge difference, is it? This thing shoots 40 megapixel photos, whereas this barely touches 10 but when's the last time you used an action camera to take photos? This thing's no more or less reliable than the Action 4 because this was already the most reliable camera on the market and it's hard to improve on what was basically perfect. So then the question becomes, is this thing worth it for the two mic two inputs, the extended battery life, the improved picture quality and the onboard storage? And for me, the answer is yes, yes. A thousand times yes. When it comes to action cameras, I'm a super user. They're how I make my living and I need every single feature they can throw at me. There's also a really nice nod in here to the previous owners of Action 4s that all of the accessories that you got for this guy work on this thing. I was entirely expecting to have to buy new ND filters for the Action 5 Pro, but I don't have to. They could have just changed the thread pitch ever so slightly on this lens cover and then I'd be screwed. They didn't do something really dumb like changing all of the batteries on this camera so that the previous generation wouldn't work. GoPro, seriously, the GoPro 13, they changed the way that the battery port works and you cannot use your old GoPro 12 batteries. That's the first time they've done it in like generations and it is the stupidest idea I've ever seen. Maybe you're just buying your first action camera and you're looking for something that is the best you can spend your money on. This is the clear winner. But here's the real question. Let's say you already have an Action 4 and you're thinking, do I need to upgrade to the Action 5? Yes, the 5 Pro is by far the better camera here. However, I don't think the average weekend warrior action camera user needs all the bleeding edge features. And let's be real, if this is the best action camera on the market, this is the second best action camera on the market and you really can't go wrong with either of these. For that average Joe user who's already got the Action 4, I would say just hang on to it for another year because this is truly a phenomenal camera. And if DJI keeps the trend rolling and they wanna release the Action 5 Pro part two first blood next year, then you're gonna get all of the improvements that this made, plus probably some additional improvements next year. Both of these cameras are really, really good. This is better, but this is still phenomenal. And with that, I'm gonna call this video a day. Let me know your thoughts on action cameras down below. Do you think we need yearly refreshes of these things, or do you think we could skip a generation and get some bigger improvements year over year, or I guess every other year. A huge shout out to DJI for sending this to me. This is going to be my new camera, and the second I can, I'm gonna be replacing my Action 4 on my dashboard so that I can have two of these things because the image quality really is that much better. But that being said, I'm not getting rid of these Action 4s because <laughs> these things are a tank. I am gonna be doing a comparison between the GoPro and the Action 5 Pro here, so uh, hang out for that video. It's probably gonna be coming like next month. And then in the meantime, catch you guys in the next one. See you later.